Hello, and welcome to Maker Monday. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Thanks so much for joining us here on Facebook for our live stream today. Every Monday at 2 p.m. you can find me right here with new fun projects for you to make at home safely and happily for the whole family. Um, today we are going to be making some bubble wrap uh, engineering and artwork, okay? Now, before we even get started, I want to tell you a little bit about bubble wrap because it's really fascinating stuff. Um, it tends to come in your packages. And I've got a bunch of it here. It comes in different sizes. So that one is really tiny. This one is a little bit of a bigger bubble. Okay, and then this one is kind of your giant bubble. So you can find lots of different sizes of bubble wrap. But all of it was invented right here in New Jersey in Hawthorne in 1957. A man named Alfred Fielding and his friend were trying to think of new, interesting ways to decorate people's homes. So, they took two shower curtains, regular old shower curtains, and they pressed them using a heating element to create lines along the um, shower curtains that sealed the shower curtains together. And then they just fed air in as they went to make little bubbles in the shower curtains. And they did this, and they made the first bubble wrap. Now their idea was, believe it or not, to use it as wallpaper, <laughs> okay? Now, as it turned out, people were not that interested in using bubble wrap as wallpaper. And I gotta be honest, I kinda can't blame them on that. I'm not sure I would wanna use bubble wrap as wallpaper either, but um, that was the original intent. It didn't do great. It didn't do very good at all. So next thing they tried to do was sell it to farmers to line their greenhouses to keep them extra insulated. The problem is bubble wrap, if you've ever used it before, it's not really strong. It's kind of easy to pop, which loses all of its insulation value. And um, it's kind of hard to attach to the walls of the greenhouse. It didn't fly. Nobody was interested. Finally, they came up with a winning idea. Try, try again. And they started using it for packaging material. And they very quickly found that it was great for keeping delicate items safe when they were sent through the uh, post office. It took off like crazy. And believe it or not, that same factory is still going today, manufacturing the world's only official bubble wrap. Um, so I just want to share that story because I think it's a really fascinating um, story of invention and maybe something not working out the way that you expected and just keep on trying new things until something works. And for Alfred Fielding and his family, that certainly has worked out really well. Okay, so in that spirit of invention, here's our first challenge for today. I want you to get if you have them, a little plastic egg, maybe a little ball, um, anything like that. It can even be a little baggie. And you're going to fill it with something that makes noise. I have um, some little brass fasteners in there that you use to hold papers together. You could try coins, you could try beans, little rocks, anything that's going to make some noise. And you don't want to fill it up all the way, just a couple. So you get kind of a rattler. If you have a maraca, go ahead and use that. Here's your challenge. Start with some packaging. I have an old cardboard box that something came in. And I want you to decide how high you're going to drop your egg from. Um, if you have a yardstick or a tape measure, you can be really official about it. But you want to control this so that every time you drop it, you're dropping it from the same height. You could just say, I'm going to drop it from right in front of my face, or I'm going to drop it from the height of the chair, whatever works. But you've got to be careful and make sure that you're always dropping it from the same distance. So you're going to drop your egg and you're gonna listen for that sound. Do it a couple times so you know how much of a rattle you get. Because your challenge is to use bubble wrap, maybe some masking tape, packing peanuts, those big bubble things that you get sometimes in packages, newspaper, anything that you can find, anything that comes as a packaging material, okay? And I want you to fill your little box with that material. So I'm gonna use a couple different types of bubble wrap here. I'm just gonna kind of line my box. I'm not being too careful about it right now. Just kind of putting it in there. All right. And now I'm going to, from the same height, drop my egg. Hmm. Do I think that I dampened the sound any? Do I get less rattle? I think I did. I wonder if adding even more bubble wrap will give me a better result. Let's find out. 
Mm, pretty good. Of course, I want to make sure it doesn't fall out. So that's your challenge. I want you to create the best nest for this egg to fall into so that you don't hear any rattle when it lands. Now, once you've prototyped with one of these plastic eggs, you can try using a real egg with mom and dad's permission to see if your little nest can catch your egg without it breaking. Okay, so that's your first engineering challenge. And I want you to make sure that you share what you created. You can either comment right here on Facebook or you could take a picture and put it up on Instagram or Facebook and just hashtag us, hashtag Warren Lib, W-A-R-R-E-N-L-I-B, so that we can see your invention, your solution to this engineering challenge, okay? Um, if you're having trouble finding bubble wrap, by the way, you might find in these kind of mailers that there is bubble wrap in there to keep them soft. And you can use a pair of scissors because I'm having trouble ripping this one open. Got some extra packing tape on there. But if you look, you can pull the paper away and that's a source of bubble wrap. So if you don't have any of this stuff sitting around, get creative and open up some of those envelopes. Okay, so that's your first challenge. Engineering challenge. See if you could drop this egg <laughs> We're able to pop to open. Drop the egg without it making any noise whatsoever. All right, on to the art. For this, you're going to need a couple of different things. We are going to create a bubble print, okay, a bubble wrap print. So if you could see that, okay, I used three different sizes of bubble wrap to make this, and I just layered different colors. It kind of makes me think of like sunshine, which is what I needed today because it's a little cloudy and rainy. So this made me really happy. Um, to make this, you're going to need some paint. You can use just about any paint for this, but watercolors don't stick very well because they don't stick to plastic very well. So I don't recommend those. Acrylics dry really quickly, and so you may not be able to get a print before your acrylics are starting to dry and it doesn't look great and it can actually stick to the paper. Um, the other thing is acrylics are really tough to wash off of the bubble wrap and the nice thing about this is that you can reuse that bubble wrap hundreds of times to make amazing artwork if you just rinse it off and dry it really quickly. Um, same goes for oils or anything like that. They're not going to wash off very well. I like using a washable tempera or poster paint. It works really well for this project. It stays wet just long enough to get a nice print. It washes off really easily. They're um, opaque enough, so they're thick enough that you uh, get a nice color and you can layer the colors. Um, so that's what I recommend, something like that. Uh, you could get that anywhere. You probably have it sitting around the house. The other thing that you can try is if you have ink pads, if mom or dad is a scrapbooker, um, you can use ink pads for this too. That will work. All right, so you need your paint. You also want paint brushes. I like to use a big foam brush for this. Uh, it, gives, it makes it very easy to cover the bubbles. A wider bristle brush will work too, but you don't really want like fine detail brushes. It's going to take a long time to paint if you do that. Honestly, if you want to, use your hands. You can smear the paint all over with your hands and just wash your hands if you don't have the right kind of brush for this. It's no big deal. And then you get a little bit messy, which is fun anyway. And last but not least, you're going to need maybe a little paper plate or a nice palette or, you know, the top of a food container to use to hold your paint while you're working. Make sure that you cover your table with some newspaper or something like that because this can get pretty messy pretty quickly. And make sure you have some ta towels around to clean up when you're done. All right, I'm going to switch cameras and show you what we're making. Here we go. So over here, am I showing up? Yep, here we go. So here's my bubble wrap, okay? And here's my little palette for today, just a little paper plate I'm using. I've got three colors that I like and I'm gonna try out today. So here, oh no, that made a mess. <laughs> I don't remember to clean my paint very often, I probably should. All right, there's some purple. Here's some, oh, there we go again, green, and a little bit of blue. Those of you that know me, you know how much I love these colors. Okay. Now, I like to use a fresh brush for each color, but if you've got like a little 
a cup of water or something and you're washing your brushes, you can do that. It's totally up to you. I, I have lots of these foam brushes, so I'm going to use those. Now for this one, the other, um, this piece of artwork that I made, I did my yellow and then I did red and then I did orange. So I did three different prints and I just layered them. And you can see I turned the bubble wrap in different directions as I went. But you don't have to do just one color at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it up right on the same bubble wrap. So I'm just going to put in some green. And as you can see, I'm not going really heavy duty on the paint. You don't want so much that you get like a kind of a mess, a goopy mess when you do your print. So there we go. We've got some green. I'm going to go ahead and put some purple on over here. And you can get really creative with this, you know. Have fun with it. I'm just adding some purple here. That looks pretty good. I like it. And last but not least, I'm going to add my blue over here. Okay. Every paint's a little bit different. You know, some of them are a little thicker, some of them aren't as thick. That's okay. We just work with it. Right? You kind of never know what you're going to get sometimes. Okay, so there we go. I've got my three colors on. I'm going to add a little more green up here and down here. Kind of fill that out. And you can see I got a little smudge of purple here. Just going to use my finger, wipe that up, and put on my, my green. No big deal. Don't need to get too worked up about it, too worried about it. It's art. We're having fun. We're creating. And, you know, this is something that's easy enough to make lots and lots of prints. So you experiment with the first couple and then see what you like the most. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, you can turn this and press it onto your paper if you want to. But I kind of found that that gave me maybe not the greatest results. I didn't like the way it looked because sometimes it twisted. I didn't get clear bubbles. I got a little bit more of a smudgy effect. You might find that that works for you and you like that. And if that's what you like, great. It's your artwork. You make what you want. I, however, am going to take my paper. Oh, and I kind of slid out of the way here. Aggressive painting. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to press it right on to my bubble wrap. And I'm just going to gently, I don't want to pop my bubbles at this stage. I just gently press the paper onto the bubble wrap. And that's why I like this, because I feel like I get really nice bubble marks this way. Really nice circles. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what we got. There we are. So there's my bubble print. That one came out pretty good. I really like the way that looks. Now I might decide to layer more on there or add maybe some doodles or anything that I would want to do to that. But that's your basic bubble print and it's pretty quick to do. All I need to do now is give my bubble wrap a quick rinse and it's ready to go for another print. And you can just keep on going like that all day long. Here's another fun idea. I, ahead of time, made a sheet of just big yellow bubbles. And I'm going to come in here with my marker, okay, and I'm going to just, I have a little felt tip pen here. Give that one a frowny face, right? Maybe give this guy a really happy smiley face. Right? Maybe I'll give him a little nose. I'm not an amazing artist, but I know some of you guys out there really, really are. So I like to just kind of make a couple sheets of these and then make all kinds of little faces and draw on them. You might see other things that you can do. For example, you might say, oh, that one looks kind of like a little balloon. I'm just going to draw a little balloon on this one. Um, maybe, you know, maybe one looks like it's a little bumblebee. And I'm going to give it some stripes, a little stinger, and a smile on its face. Okay? So you can get really creative with it, have a lot of fun. Oh, I didn't give him legs, and that's just bugging me as a biologist. Six legs for a bug. Um, so go ahead and have fun and see who can come up with the most creative faces or come up with the most interesting designs using your printed bubbles. You don't have to stop at just the circles. You can take it from there and go and do all kinds of fun little things with it, right? All right.
we're going to go on back to the other camera and talk about next week. Let me just clean up a little bit. Oh, wow. Look, I have a mess here. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So I can't wait to see what you make, whether you decide to make some funny faces on a print or get creative with different colors or layer on different paints and see what you can come up with. Um, when you do make your artwork, make sure you post it for us. Put it right there in the comments with mom and dad's permission and hashtag Warren Lib, right? W-A-R-R-E-N-L-I-B. I really want to see your crazy artwork, okay? Um, I will be back again on Friday for Friday Steam. We will be featuring another New Jersey invention, the phonograph. So we'll be learning about how sound works and making our own paper phonograph. So dig out some of those old records that mom and dad might have sitting around. And all you need is a needle and some paper. Very simple. Um, next Monday at 2 p.m., I will be back for Maker Monday. Uh, and I've got more fun projects planned for you then. Okay? I am so glad to be able to connect with you this way. I miss you guys. We can't wait to be back at the Makerspace at Southwest, back in the library, and having fun again. Um, but in the meantime, at least we can see each other this way. So make sure you check out the Warren County Library website regularly. Our events page has lots of really cool stuff happening. We have clubs like anime and book clubs. We have scavenger hunts. We have all kinds of really fun events going on for you. So make sure you check that out regularly so you can be part of it. Well, I'm Sandy Roberts. I'm your Makerspace Coordinator. I will see you 2 p.m. Monday, 2 p.m. Friday, every week until we can be back together in the Makerspace. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Go and make something amazing.